<laughs> I'm just gonna sit here and wait. Wait for people to show up. <laughs> I literally just finished eating dinner. <laughs> I'm just gonna be waiting for people to show up before I start, since I told everybody eight o'clock. <laughs> but I didn't wanna wait that long. <laughs> so, hi you guys. I am so glad that you guys are coming in. <clears throat> I know I told everybody eight o'clock, but hi Raquel. <laughs> I told everyone eight o'clock, but I didn't want to wait that long. I didn't think it was going to take me that long to get done with dinner after I came home. I came home and changed and made dinner and ate. <laughs> so um, I wanted to do another talk tarot uh, with me. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to talk tarot. Talk tarot with me and all of us. <laughs> um uh, when I was driving home from work, I was thinking about what do I want to talk about with Tarot? What do I want to discuss with you guys tonight? Please don't mind barking dogs. I'm, I'm house-sitting and the dogs are very vocal. <laughs> Hi! Um, so, hang on. This is, they're going to drive me nuts, so. They'll probably be able to see them. Come on. That's Bubba, our bulldog. Um, okay. Watching you while I make pancakes. Oh, the kids are eating pancakes. What? I wish I had pancakes. <laughs> um, so I was thinking, okay, what do I want to talk about for Talk Tarot with me? Um, and then I was realizing I got a lot of messages throughout the week um, from maybe three or four people asking me questions about how they started, how to start reading the tarot cards. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do is discuss a little bit about learning the tarot, like when you are just starting out, kind of some of my tips and just some advice. Um, I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you think we should talk about something like that? Um, I have a lot of followers who um, just acquired a brand new deck within this week. Um, and I've had a couple of them reach out to me asking me like, okay, I got this deck. Now what do I do? So I was thinking of, um, you know, discussing, discussing that, discussing like being a newbie, you know, a tarot beginner, that kind of thing. Um, and I have a deck with me. I have a couple decks with me and we can talk. And if you guys have questions about, um, you know, starting, reading to starting when you start reading tarot like being new to tarot um getting familiar with your your brand new deck if you guys have questions go ahead and just throw them out there in the chat um and i will do my best to answer them if I, as i see them but this is basically just a little casual chit chat about being um new with tarot so um let's see the first thing when you are starting your tarot journey, I feel that a lot of people um, have this preconceived notion that tarot is evil or that it is bad or you can get, you know, you can invite negative energies or you can invite demons into your house by having a deck of cards. And I was thinking about that when I was driving home from work today and I was thinking, you know, I used to be one of those people. I used to think, oh my gosh, I just ordered my very first tarot deck off of Amazon. What if it's evil or what if it is, you know, attracting demons when I'm reading? How do I know if I'm not talking to demons when I'm reading the cards? That kind of thing. And that is a very legit um, thing to, to worry about when you are first starting out. I think a lot of us do. Um, and it's weird because when you're first starting with your tarot journey, it's so easy to get sucked into thinking that, to think that it's taboo, it's bad, it's evil, it's wrong. Um, but then as you start to learn the cards, you realize it's not that bad. It's not evil. It's not, you know, all of those things that you worried about, it's really not. Um, 
So I think that that's like one of the first things I wanted to tap into is that a tarot deck is a tool. It's not evil and it doesn't conjure anything evil. You're not going to attract um, demons just by holding a deck of cards. It's That is all um, at the reputation that people give a tarot deck, okay? Um, so we have a question that says, Kat says, uh, what would you say is the best beginner deck? So obviously the Rider Waite, um, I learned with the original Rider Waite. So Rider Waite decks are very good to start with. They are probably the most common um, decks that you will see. It's, you know, that the typical, uh, uh, the one that you see in the movies and and I, I, use, it, I use it a lot too. So I would say Rider Waite. Um, I also recommend... The Witch's Tarot by Ellen Dugan. That one is a really good one. Um, I also recommend the Psychic Tarot, which is the one I have right here. It's more of um, like an oracle deck, but I feel like, like the cards have little phrases at the bottom, and I feel like that helps um, stimulate your intuition when you're just learning. Um, what other tarot deck would I recommend? Um, hmm. The Pagan Cats Tarot is a good one. The Zombie Tarot is a good one. Even the Wild Unknown. The Wild Unknown is different. It's very um, abstract, I feel. But some people, you know, work good with those kind of decks rather than just the Rider Waite. So honestly, it's your own personal, like, the kind of artwork that you like. Um, okay, Rose, how do you cleanse your energy after doing a series of readings? Something that you practice on an everyday basis. Okay, so cleansing your cards. Now, um, this is also a, a tip for people who are new with reading the tarot. You can cleanse your cards so many different ways. You can do... A smoke cleanse where you light incense um, so pretend pretend this is an incense stick so you light the incense and it's smoking right and then you can wave this the incense stick around the cards in bulk like that um, or if you really want to get into it throw on some music dim the lights get it all nice and cozy and go card by card okay so that imagine, you know, that's incense, the smoke is, is coming out and you're doing it card by card. Um, you can also do the same thing with sage. So you light sage and let it smoke and do the same thing. Now, let's say you live in a household like I do, um, where you can't light smoke. You can't have smoke. You can't light it, light anything. You could do the same thing with a crystal like I was doing. So this is a selenite stick. So you could do the same thing. Selenite is very good with cleansing. Um, so round, you know, going around with the in um, with the with the crystal. You could also use sprays. So if you have a spray, um, what I like to do is I'll hold the cards in one hand and I'll spray it a couple times, and then I give them a good shuffle because I feel like the shuffling will distribute the spray, the mist throughout the cards. And I'll do that a couple times until I just feel it's good. You could also put your cards in order. Um, I find when you put the cards in order, it's like you're resetting the energy for that deck. So by order, I mean putting all of the suits together. Um, you know, the tarot deck is the suits are one through 10. So put them in order, put the majors in order. And then I like to, if you hear snoring, that's the dog. <laughs> and then I like to put a crystal on top of um, the deck like this and let it sit. Sometimes I'll let it sit like this on my reading table or under the full moon, like for tonight, you could put your deck out, put a crystal on top for that added, um, you know, just that added pizzazz. It doesn't matter what kind of crystal you use. You could use any crystal you want um, and let it sit on the windowsill if you want. Um, so you could do like a full moon charge. You could do a new moon charge. Um, what's another way you could cleanse your deck? just simply by shuffling it. So if you're a tarot reader, like you're on the go, you have to you know do a quick shuffle. I've seen tarot readers 
they'll knock on their deck and shuffle it and boom, it's good. It's basically your intention, the intention that you are placing on that, on that deck to cleanse it, okay? Um, now on a daily basis or everyday basis, I don't, I will not cleanse my cards daily. Um, let's say like, let's say I was using this deck for the whole week on client readings. Yeah, I'll cleanse it. Um, but on the full moon and stuff, I'm not putting out all of my cards cause I have too many. <laughs> I'll pick and choose. Um, the, the more you, you get involved with your cards, you will begin to feel their energy, their, their personality. You'll know, um, if a deck needs to be cleansed or not, it'll, it just won't feel right to you. So if you feel like it needs to be cleansed, then do it. Um, but there's no right or wrong way to cleanse them. And there's no length of time, you know, when you need to. How is this full moon affecting the cards? So basically, it's not necessarily the full moon affecting the cards. It's, it's your own energy yourself. So, I, and I think... <laughs> This is my opinion. I think everybody has their own opinion about this kind of stuff. But if I'm using my deck and I am in a bad mood, um, my mood, my energy is going into the cards. That's how I feel, okay? If I let a client touch my cards, um, you better believe I will cleanse them after because people bring with them energy. Um, and energy can be invested into your tools. So. The full moon itself, I feel, doesn't influence. I feel the full moon influences us individually. So some of us are totally vibing with the full moon right now. Like, I know I am. I feel really good about it. But I also know I have some friends that are not feeling good right now. So everyone's different. Everybody relates to the full moon differently. Dame Kitty says, um, anything you feel like you love the art on is a good deck for you. Yeah. Um, you started with the Rider Waite and the Fairy Tale from Lo, the Fairy Tarot from Los Gribo. Okay, yeah, Dame Kitty is right. If you like a certain artwork on the cards, it's gonna if it if it attracts you, go for it. You have to like the artwork to want to work with the deck. If you are not attracted to the artwork, you're not gonna want to work with the cards because you're just you're not gonna feel connected. So. I could tell you this deck is good for beginners, but maybe for you personally, it won't resonate. So you really got to like kind of investigate your own decks before you make a purchase. Um, so Google them, um, YouTube, sometimes people do deck reviews. Um, try to, to look at the cards before you purchase them because the artwork is all the difference. But what about your energy, my energy? Let me see. Rose, how do you change? How do you cleanse your energy? Oh, okay. So cleansing yourself, cleansing your own energy the same way. Um, I will often use a crystal, whether it's clear quartz or, or a selenite. And you know, you could wave it over yourself, okay? And you just kind of wave it over the surface of your aura. You could do that. Oh, when I do that, you could feel a tingle. It's like it's weird. <laughs> Um, you could do the same thing with the, with the sage, lighting your sage, lighting your incense, um, allow the smoke to kind of, you know, drift around your body. <laughs> so you could, you could literally smoke cleanse yourself too. do the same thing with a crystal. You could spray yourself with the, with the mist, the cleansing mist as well. That's another good way to do it. Um, you could sit in meditation and imagine, you know, a golden white light around you for protection. You can do breathing exercises where you're breathing in positivity and you're breathing out negativity. Um, you could do cord cutting meditations to cut cords. So it's like all those energetic attachments that you have to other people and places and things and everything, cut them off. You could cut them off. And I recommend doing a cord cutting at least once a month, especially if you're constantly around people. Um, if you have a job where you're just <laughs> dealing with people on a daily basis, cord cutting is amazing. Um, so the same way that you cleanse your cards, you could do the same thing with yourself. Also, oh, taking a shower. When you're like, when the water is, is running down your body, imagine that as it, it's all intention. So you're imagining it from your third eye that that water is cleansing your body clean. It's not just washing you clean physically, but it's also spiritually cleansing you. 
So intention is everything. <laughs> Let's see, anyone else have a question? Tarot with Sonia says, thank you. Those are some great ideas. Um, you knock on the deck too, yeah. I was also really interested to know how you clear your energy and not the card's energy. Yeah, that's pretty much the same way. Um, when I'm meditating, um, I don't know, like I've done the photo where I have like the crystal on my forehead. I like to put the crystal over my third eye um, to cleanse that out because this is, I'm using this all the time in my readings. Um, but the crystal cleanse is probably the fastest. You just wave your wand over your body and up and down. You'll feel it too. <laughs> Let's see. Sometimes that can help a reader cleanse their energy. Something that can help a reader cleanse their energy. So I recommend for energy cleanses, I recommend crystals. <clears throat> I recommend certain sprays. So a lot of metaphysical shops will sell energy cleansing sprays. Everyone calls them something different, negative, negativity banishing sprays. Um, you can make your own if you know how to make like your own mists. You could totally do your own and you can infuse it with a crystal. So you could drop like a little crystal chip in there and you know, it works its wonders. But like I said, it, everything is intention. So even if you're just taking a shower, you set that intention that the water is cleansing you clean. Um, that's the majority of what a lot of this stuff is, is intention. The same thing when you're doing your spells and this and that, if you, if you do, if you work with candle magic or you do your spells or, you know, you do all your witchy stuff, it's all intention. The power of that is a huge, uh, <coughs> excuse me. I like a salt scrub in the shower of my, yes, salt scrubs are good. Um, one of my friends, she gifted me this, um, body like the the body gel the shower gel stuff but it was made by a witch and it was her own personal concoction and it's literally like an aura cleanse so i do that once every month with um either the full or the new moon or both um but i'll just i'll do that that whole thing it's it's like my shower ritual once or twice a month it's really magical but i'm sad because my bottle is almost done <laughs> so i have to buy another one Thank you so much for all the ideas. Oh, you're welcome, love. I, I hope that that helped. Hi, Rosa. I was wondering, what is your favorite tarot spread to use, like your go-to spread? Okay, so the one that you guys probably see me use all the time um, in my YouTube videos, it's usually, it could be anywhere from five cards to ten cards. Um, but basically, I always have... So if you have paper and pen, write this down or catch it on the replay. <laughs> but basically it's the first card would be your core energy. So this, this card, the number one would represent you or your core energy. That could also represent the energy of your question. And then number two would be the challenge or the block. So that's always like a given. I always have the core energy and then the block or challenge. Um, these are, it's like a quick go-to spread that I do. Um, and then I pull what is backing you up. So this could, this you could look at this also as your past, but I look at it as what's backing me up. And then number four would be what's in my future or what do I need to look forward to? And then I usually pull like maybe three. Um, I like to work in threes. So I'll pull three cards to, sh to represent what is um, supporting the question. You know, what do I need to know, the advice. It just depends on the question that I'm looking for, the answers that I'm looking for. And then I'll have like an outcome. So that's usually like, that's usually what I do. But to be honest, um, the majority of my tarot readings are completely intuitive. I just pull cards and I read it. And as you guys are learning your tarot, you will be comfortable with either working with a specific spread or pulling your own cards intuitively. There is no right or wrong way to do it. It's whatever you feel naturally drawn to do is what you're meant to do. I love your take on the zombie tarot. I sometimes use a zombie tarot. Yes, for the past life, yes. Please make more videos on that deck. Oh, I definitely will. I find that the, the zombie tarot is a really, really good deck for past life. 
There's just certain decks that I think work perfect for certain types of readings, and that one is definitely a past life reading deck for me. <laughs> do you remember the meaning of the cards from the book they came from, or do you just go by your intuition you get when you see the card? Yes, that's a good question. So, <sighs> let's see. When you're first starting out learning the cards, I recommend... This is what I recommend. This is not what I say is what you need to do. Uh, I recommend learning keywords, maybe one, two, or three keywords that pop up in your head for a specific card, okay? So a lot of times the booklets will have the keywords for each card. I recommend getting familiar with a couple of them so that if you do pull a card and your intuition, you're just you just have like this brain fart, nothing's coming to you, at least you have the key words to, to lean back on and usually that'll start stimulating you to, to pull other stuff. So I recommend having key words, but not necessarily like, you don't have to go definition word for word from the guidebook because every guidebook is different. But let's say, let's say you pull, this deck is a little, is, is bad for the, <laughs> it's bad for example. But let's say you pull the Five of Cups, okay? Five of Cups in any tarot deck, as long as you know the key word, will mean the same thing. But then you start looking at the artwork. Every artist has a different perspective of how to um, show the Five of Cups. So some one artist might see it as a, as a negative, another artist might see it as positive. But as long as you know the key word, the Five of Cups will always be the same for every deck. That is how I am able to work with so many different tarot decks and not have to study the same, the, their own separate guidebooks. I usually will go with the main overall definition of what a five of cups would be. And then of course, pay attention to the artwork and then pay attention to your intuition as well. Because sometimes your keyword definition of the five of cups has absolutely nothing to do with that person that you're reading for. And then sometimes it does. So it just depends. Um, I know it sounds so like <laughs> confusing, but when, you're, when you start reading a lot more, you'll start to understand that. Like sometimes you'll have a client reading where the keyword definitions are perfect and on point. And then sometimes you will have a client reading where you are just reading like based on what you're feeling it's more intuitive so it just depends the spread is great thank you <laughs> i hope the spread helped <laughs> thank you so much for much love positive energy oh you're welcome love i'm glad that you are enjoying it does anyone else have any questions for um about the tarot because um i'm here to answer your questions Did you ever have any doubt when you started using tarot? Oh, yes. <laughs> doubt will always be there. And it doesn't go away. Um, when I first started reading the cards, I first, I would doubt, um, I would doubt my ability to read. I would doubt that what I was receiving, was that really spirit's message or is that just me? You know, is it my ego or is it my intuition? I was really like um, battling that, the ego versus the intuition. Um, and then now further along after I've been reading for a few years, I still doubt that if I'm coming, if I get a message that is like completely left field and I say it for my client, sometimes I doubt, oh my gosh, what if they don't resonate with that message? What if I'm completely wrong? And that is just something you have to overcome because um, we're human. We will always doubt ourselves. Um, but you will be so surprised if you are reaching out with your intuition how accurate you are. <laughs> so doubt is 100%. It's there. I still have it all the time. All the time. Which is why it's so nice to receive um, feedback from your clients because it just makes you realize, oh shit, I'm really good at what I do. So um, if you ever get readings from, from readers, you guys, leave them feedback because it's really helpful for us to know, you know, did we get it? What do we need to work on? What did we misinterpret, okay? 
Let's see. Do you use readings for, yes. <laughs> do I do readings for my husband and what does he think of the tarot? So yes, I do read for my husband. Um, I prefer not to read for my husband, to be honest. He is very hard to read for. My husband is a Taurus. He is very stubborn, but he, uh, but I love him. I love him, but he is so stubborn and he's very um, closed off. So my, me, my energy is very open. <laughs> we have to be open as readers because we are like, we're, I, I like to think of myself as like a recycle, like I'm recycling energy. I'm constantly feeling everyone out and I'm, you know, I'm giving and receiving like all over the place, right? My husband's very closed off. So when I read for him, sometimes I have to tell him like, babe, like relax, let it go. You, you know, sometimes he will doubt what I'm doing. Sometimes he will think, nah, nah. But then other times he does, you know. How does he feel about the tarot? When I first started, he was very skeptical. And he was also very uncomfortable. Um, not many people know this, but I owned a tarot deck for a couple years prior to me learning five years ago. Um, and I kept it in my closet because my husband, well, at the time he was my boyfriend, but he didn't like it. He was like, I don't, don't touch that. He was one of those people that's evil. You're going to invite evil spirits in the house. Um, if that's the work of the devil, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and then I remember, um, I just got curious and it's just, you know, tarot started entering my life and the more I was comfortable with it and the more I understood what tarot was, and I was able to explain that to my husband was how he opened up and he's very receptive to it now. So he accepts it and he supports it as well. I have that when I'm pulling for someone I know really well, like you're going to, yeah, you're, you're based on what you already know. Yes, very true. Um, that's why some people, some readers, some readers can read for their friends and wives and husbands and whoever. Um, I prefer not to. Um, if my husband really, really wants a reading, I will do it. Um, but I prefer not to read for him because I would rather him get insight from a total stranger than his wife. Um, but if I have to, I will read for him. But he's like, I, I've recommended readers to him and he'll go and get readings. <laughs> he just recently got one from Elise. So that was kind of cool. Um, who else will I not read for? Um, myself. You know, I'll read for myself, but I prefer to get readings from other people because like I said, the same thing, I see what I want to see in my cards, um, but sometimes what I don't want to see is there and I don't want to admit it to myself. <laughs> um, but I'll read for myself. Like tonight, I'm going to pull cards for myself for the full moon, um, but I would prefer readings from other people. And I do, I reach out all the time. And then... Family members, my family doesn't know what I do, so I don't read for them, and I probably never will. <laughs> um, and then friends, I have read, I have a couple friends that I do read for, and that's fine. I'm able to connect with them, but it's basically myself and my husband are like the two people I just cannot. It's too hard. Um, that happens in it. Yeah, it makes me very nervous. <laughs> Rose, if you ever, if ever someone says they did not resonate with your reading, how do you handle the situation, especially when it was a paid reading? Oh, yes. <laughs> um, I have received maybe, oh, I, don't, I don't even know. I've done so many readings, but I have received a couple of um, responses, you know, feedback where they did not re resonate with it. I had one client that... Um, felt that I never answered their question. So um, that one I did another video for. I felt bad because as I was looking back on the video, I realized, you know what? I kind of like answered it, but I didn't really give them the answer. Um, so I redid it. They still gave me a bad review, which that's, they have every right to, you know, you have every right to review your reader. Um, so I learned from that. Um, I've had another client where they didn't like the reading at all and I refunded them. So I'll do a refund on a case by case basis. Um, if I feel like they, you know, that, that, yeah, they'll get the refund, then I will. Um, I've had to refund in full before. 
Um, and then I've also done partial refunds because I did do the reading and it took time to type it up, you know? <laughs> so I refunded them, but just a portion, you know? Usually I'll go half um, on stuff like that. But it's a case by case basis. Now, receiving negative feedback. Um, I've received a couple emails um, where they complained about the, re the reading. And I want to say the majority of my negative feedback is from my hotline readings. <laughs> um, hotline readings are so different from the readings that I do for you guys on YouTube and my email. So different. And I don't know why. I think it's probably because it's a quick buck where you just pay like five bucks and then you get your reading for the hotline. But for the hotline... Um, the client didn't get the answer they wanted, basically. Um, and they were fishing around with other readers because I was like, I could see their name pop up on other um, reviews. And they are known for fishing. They ask the same question to five other readers. And if they don't get the same answer from everybody, they will complain. So I had one of those. Um, I had another person who wanted me to give them a name for the person of their true love. And it's like, the tarot doesn't work like that, you know? So some people don't understand that, and I, I have to sympathize with that because not everyone's going to get it. Um, but I would have to say my hotline readings are probably the ones where I got my ass grilled a lot. <laughs> um, and the way you handle it is it's constructive criticism. That's the way you have to approach it. Um, take it for what it is. If a reader is truly unhappy with what you did, look back and, and, and see what it, what, what, where did I go wrong, you know? Was it the interpretation? Was it my delivery? Um, I make a very major effort to send out a beautiful email reading um, because I know that my clients are purchasing a product. So when I do my email readings, I have a, a, a template. It's it's pretty. Like I try to make it as beautiful as I can. I try to take the most beautiful photos because I think, oh my gosh, this client is going to print this out and they're going to keep it in their diary forever and show their kids. Like, I don't know. That's just mentally what I think. <laughs> so I try to do my best with my delivery. But um, so you, you just have to, you have to take, take their complaints for what it is and grow from it. Um, don't let it harm you. It doesn't mean you suck. <laughs> it doesn't mean that you should never read tarot again. It just means that you did not vibe with that person. Some people will go to certain readers because they, they vibe with that energy. Um, I am not for everybody. That is 100%. There are some people that are looking for a certain type of reader that I am not. And I am way okay with that. <laughs> I am not for everyone and I'm not trying to be for everyone. So that's another way to look at it is just look at it as just like how you have certain friends that you love and then there's certain people that you just you don't even know anything about them. But there's just something about their energy that you're just like, oh, get away from me. It's the same thing with the client and the reader relationship. Some people you will love and other people it's like, ugh. <laughs> so it's just, it's, it's all trial and error. But don't take it personally as hard as that sounds. Um, it's hard, yeah. But for every rotten review, there is 10 more beautiful ones waiting for you. So keep at it. <laughs> Let's see. Do you feel that your business constantly evolving? For example, I was offering offered, I was offering readings like one card, two card, etc. Mm -hmm. And last night you revamped your store to be small, medium, and large. Yes, go. I wonder if clients get upset when you make changes or do they go with the flow? Okay, that's a good question. So, um, yes, when I first started reading the tarot and charging for readings, because I did free ones for a long time. Um, when I started charging, I was literally doing $1, one card readings and like my 10 card spread that is now $35. I was charging, I think like eight bucks <laughs> and that's how much I was, I started out with. It was very cheap. I never, I didn't have any readings over $10. Um, and I did that for a while, but you start to see 
the time that, that it takes to, to put the reading together. I was doing all of these email orders. I wasn't even doing video readings yet. So I was sitting there at my laptop typing and I could type forever, you guys. Like some of my readings can be five, six, seven, ten plus pages. It just depends on how much, you know, messages are coming through. Um, and it's a lot of time. So that $8, 10 card reading, that was out the door maybe within a few months. And then you start to notice like, oh, I'm getting more clients. Like, oh, I actually got, you know, two orders this week. Cool. You know, or um, you'll start realizing like your, your time is worth it, you know, because that for me at the time I was working full time and then I, when I would come home after working eight hours and then I would be sitting at my computer typing or reading, you know, so my time is precious at that point and I was tired and I was like, you know what? I deserve it. So then what would I do? I would bump up a couple bucks. Um, the way that I gradually bumped up my, my services is by a, a few dollars. Um, I want to say, because I've been reading paid readings five years now, every year, I, I remember I would bump up every January. I would bump up like, you know, two or three dollars and some of them I would bump up even more. Um, I remember the first time I started charging $25, I think it was like 20 or $25. <laughs> I was so nervous. And yes, you will see a decline in some of your clients. Um, there are people who are only out there for a quick $5 reading. That's all they want to do. Um, and then you have the clients that will treasure what you do because they love you, because they vibe with your messages, the way that you deliver stuff. They're like, oh, I love you as a reader, I, you know, and they will stick around. Um, so you will have people who will disappear. I did. I have a lot of clients that I used to read for for the quick one five dollar readings that I don't have anymore. But then I gained a whole bunch of new ones later on with time. So yes, it depends. The money, you know, it it flip flops. But um, with raising your prices comes a different type of client. Okay. So the people who are looking for freebies all the time, they they go away because they realize, oh my gosh she's never going to do a free reading anymore, you know, and they'll go off to someone who is actually offering freebies. So there's someone for everyone. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, the sizes of my readings, I would, uh, yeah, I remember I went from like the one card, then I was doing like a two card, a three card, you know, um, the, the, the large reading. I think I still, I do that right now. I have a one question, two question, three question reading. Um, you'll, you'll start to evolve. So that's that you're totally on it. You're doing good. <laughs> Um, and then as far as like raising your prices, I've never had to my face, a client tell me you're too expensive. Um, I have had anonymous, um, when I was uh, using Tumblr a lot, I would have uh, anonymous people leave me anonymous messages, um, telling me that I was too expensive, that I was too, you know, that I was too pricey, you know, who would pay that much money for a reading? And I was like, at the time it was, you know, my readings were like 20, 20 plus dollars. You know, they were usually like, they float around 20 to $50. And I'm like thinking, I read for in, inside shops too, like in, in person. And the, the shop owner is wanting me to charge like $90 for an hour reading. So I'm like, $20 is too much. It just depends on the age range too, the audience. If you are reading for people who are in their early 20s, who are on budgets, who are paying a shitload of money for school, they most likely won't have the money to pay for a 50 plus dollar reading, give or take, depending on the situation. Um, but if you are reading for people who are more established in their careers, who have money, they don't think twice about that. So it really depends. It really depends. Um, I saved the reading that I got from you because they have advice for now and the future and I appreciate that. Oh, thank you, love. You're so sweet. <laughs> I'm so happy that you saved it. A lot of people just want to hear what they want to hear. Can't blame the reader. Yeah, a lot of people want to hear it and it sucks to be told no when you want to hear yes. <laughs> Sometimes people need to give time to, yes, yes. Sometimes your reading um, will say so you know, if I do a, you know, a reading that says, yeah, the love, it's not happening right now, 
but then you give and take give or take like a couple months and then you realize oh shit it actually happened a lot of times the readings won't resonate for a couple months and i've had clients come back to me and tell me that it's really cool they're really petty <laughs> Thank you for the YouTube video you did on the nice presentation and email. I changed how I did that right after and I felt that it was propel your business. Yes, girl. Um, I have a lesson for that too. Um, the way that you do your email readings, like not for you, not you in general, but everybody. Um, I purchased a reading from a reader and this person is off, for, they're a YouTube reader. Um, so no one, it would be nobody here. <laughs> And this person was charging $25 for a three card reading. And I really loved the way that she reads. Um, I still do, I still watch her. And so I purchased her reading and I remember thinking, okay, I'm gonna pay 25 bucks for three cards. And at that time, my own personal readings were the, at lower rates than what they're at right now. So I was thinking, okay, you know, I'm thinking I'm gonna get this beautiful email, right? Cause that's what I'm giving out, so I figured, Oh, I'll get the same thing back. But not everybody is on that same wavelength. Like some people, some people do their email readings differently and there's nothing wrong with it. But I feel personally, and this is my opinion, um, you guys can take it or leave it. Um, my opinion is if you are purchasing a service, an email reading, I expect it to look beautiful and pretty and attractive because that's where my money is going, right? It's going towards your service. You wanna make it look good. So her email reading came back to me in the body, in the body of the email. It wasn't even a PDF attachment. It was just in the body, like as if she was emailing me, right? That was the reading. And it wasn't just that, because that could be fine too, because the substance can be really good. But the photos of the cards were fuzzy I couldn't see it. It was like blurry. And I was so, it, it was it was like a deal breaker for me. And I was so, I remember I was frustrated. I was like, what is this? <laughs> so I think, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure if there's other readers in here, um, do you guys ever like compare because you are a reader? Do you compare yourself with other, the way other readers conduct their business? Because I noticed that I will tend to do that. Um, and I was very disappointed, at the, but I would give her this. The reading was very on point. It was a very good reading. Um, I really enjoyed what she had to say, but her presentation, I did not like the presentation. Um, so that kind of, ugh. and I remember when I saw that and I saw how I felt about the presentation of that reading, that is what made me think, you know what? I really want to step up my game because every single time one of my clients opens one of my email readings, I want them to be, oh, wow, this is nice. I want to print this out because it's pretty. <laughs> so that's why I do what I do. That's why I have that certain presentation. That's why it's so important to me. Uh, email readings take a lot of energy. Hell yeah, they do. Um, email readings... <laughs> Email readings take the energy of sitting down and typing. It's easy to like talk, right? To talk and to say what you're, what you're feeling, but then you gotta like compute it in your mind and then type it. It's grammar, it's punctuation. And then if you're doing a template, you gotta make sure it looks good. And then your photos, you gotta take a picture and upload it to your computer and put it in the, oh my gosh, it's a lot of work. <laughs> um, when I do an email reading, I for sure one hour, sometimes more depending on how big the reading is. So yes, they do take a lot of energy. Who's ready to pay for you? Who are ready to pay you for your services for your readings? Oh, wait, but you also find new clients who are ready to pay for your services and your readings. Yes, I feel like you get a lot of people who respect you um, based on the content that you put out and the accuracy as well. I had the most amazing feedback ever. She ended it as, as long as she stays cheap, I'll come back. <laughs> well, I mean, I think that that's sweet too. But the thing is, is we all, if, if okay. <laughs> if tarot readings are your, if it's your job, if you are surviving off of what you make, 
Oh, sorry, I have to let my dog in. If you are surviving with, with what you make, you're not gonna be a $10 reader forever. Like, and, and it's natural too. Like when you first start reading, you will go through the waves. You will be a free reader. And then you'll be like maybe a two or $5 reader. And then your next thing you know, you're a $20 reader, $50 reader. And then before you know it, you're charging $100 for content and someone is willing to pay for it because they love what you do. <laughs> so you don't, don't feel, and I don't want you to feel this way, girl, because I don't want you to feel like, oh my gosh, I have to stay as a cheap I have to be a cheap reader to keep clients. No, you don't have to. Um, you can be any kind of reader that you want and charge whatever you want. There will always be clients who will pay for what you do because they respect you. Give That's bottom line. <laughs> and then yes, you will lose clients, but who cares? You'll lose the ones that, that are only expecting so much out of you. I have, let's see, I've gotten a few readings through Etsy where my shop is very disappointed. I used to, I use, blah, 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 blah. I use you as one of the main tarot mentors. Your readings for me have been on point. I strive to do that. Oh, thank you. Etsy readers, you've gone to not, yes. Um, there's a couple Etsy readers that I like. Um, and there's a couple readers I've gotten readings from where the content, like, like I said, the email readings, it blew me away and I was like, oh my gosh, I want, I need to have something like this. Like I need to be beautiful like this. Um, same thing with the video readings. Video readings, oh, having good lighting. Oh my God. Like for a long time I was using my webcam and that thing sucked, but that was all I had. Um, but good lighting is everything. Having like crystals on the table and a candle. And you want to make the setting look like so your client feels like they are sitting right in front of you in this magical tarot reading room, you know? Um, I think that when I started reading in the shops for people in person, I was reading at a metaphysical shop. That really inspired me to have this set up because it is everything. You have clients who have never... <laughs> Who have never stepped into a store like that who have never had a tarot reading and they look at you like you were a magical mystical goddess and you really want to play that part you know you really want to make them feel special and that's what that is what I find so special about those in-person readings I have to keep that in mind so when I do my video readings I always want to do the same thing that's why I try to have like a pretty setup because I want them to feel that magical vibe of the tarot reading where I feel like now as a reader I feel like I lost that magical vibe feeling <laughs> because tarot reading now is just like an everyday thing for me um which is why every once in a while I will step out and get a reading from someone that I've never had a reading from before because I anticipate that email or I anticipate that reading and it's exciting again so yeah let's see Hi, I absolutely love all of your content on Instagram, and I think that you have a really awesome page. Just wanted to get that out first. Oh, thanks, love. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask if, if you had any tips for better connecting to energy and understanding energy and figuring out what energy belongs to you and what is coming from someone or something else. Oh, yes. Ugh. I still struggle with differentiating sometimes um especially when it's in person it's funny because the energy that i feel when i do remote reading which is online readings in per um by email or by video i can i find that easier to differentiate because i'm in my quiet zone so the first tip i have for you is make sure that you are in a private quiet space okay don't be doing no readings with like your kids crying and playing and constantly bugging or don't be doing a reading when you're working at work. You know, I, I was guilty of that. I did that one time. Never again. <laughs> um, you have to make sure you are in the zone. Okay. Um, if you are doing an, a reading in person, same thing, make sure you are in the zone, have your crystals out, have like, you want the space to feel like your reading space. When you ha are in the zone, you will feel it. Um, Sometimes if you're sitting face to face with a person, you will feel their energy and it and when I say you'll feel their energy, it's it's like it's kind of like like you're sitting there and, and you're already getting these these thoughts 
or these assumptions about this person like man she's really bitchy right now or like there's something wrong with her like um you know she must be having a bad day because i could feel it you know it, it's it's weird like like you you know when you meet someone for the first time and you get these vibes and you're just like i don't know i don't know who that person is but i don't like them it's it's like that that feeling that is energy that you are feeling um when you're doing a reading the minute you pull your card without even like really thinking about what card you pulled what is the first thing that pops in your head that nine times out of ten is your intuition telling you la 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 it's a message for the person so as you get more comfortable with your readings you will get more comfortable with the first the, the minute you look at the card and that first thought that comes to mind run on that because nine times out of ten that first that first initial thought is the message that is spirit telling you what is going on another hint is um messages from spirit are thoughts feelings ideas images that you are not controlling i don't know if that makes sense like like right now i could control like i'm thinking about chocolate okay i just i just told myself i'm, I'm thinking about chocolate but let's say you're just sitting here randomly and you're reading for someone and all of a sudden you have this image of like this little dog. To me, that's message from spirit. I wasn't purposely thinking about a dog. <laughs> that dog just came, you know, appeared. So if that happens, then usually what I do is I'll say, now this is probably going to sound weird, but right now I, I have this image of a dog. I don't know if this dog has anything to do with you, blah, 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 blah. And then you go on your whole like thing. Um, so that's another tip is like a thought and a feeling a, an image that comes to mind randomly spirit, that's spirit. Another thing, and this is what I learned from one of the psychic classes that I took <laughs> when you are connecting with spirit, you usually feel it from one side, a certain side. Okay. So a thing that you could practice if you guys are like all into this spirit talk, um, is sit there. And then you ask your guides or whoever it is that you connect with, okay? And like, so let's say you're talking to your guides. Okay, guys, like throw something at me, you know? Make me feel something, give me a message, show me where you're at. Where do you feel them? Do you feel a tingle on your right side? Do you feel it to your left? Do you feel it behind you or above you? Everyone is different. When my spirits are talking to me, like when my spirit guide, when Edward, I call him Edward, by the way. <laughs> but when, when Edward is talking to me, he's on this side. I feel him here. And then I usually get a shift and I have it right now. I don't know. Well, you guys probably can't see it, but I, ha I get um, chills, like chills. And it's usually just on one arm, one arm. That is my sign that Edward or my spirit guide is around me. When I'm giving readings to clients, if I get the chills after something they say or something I say after I pull a card, that is a sign for me that I am resonating with them or what the connection I am saying is legit. That's like my sign for them. And usually I'll tell them, you got to get in the habit of sharing that, sharing what you are feeling and experiencing with your clients because you will get so much more comfortable talking about that stuff. Um, nine times out of 10, you will start connecting. I remember I told a client, oh my gosh, I just got chills right now. Um, I feel spirit is in the room. And usually they're like, oh my God, I feel it too. And half the time your clients aren't gonna wanna tell you because they're gonna feel so self-conscious or they're nervous or they don't, or a lot of times your clients don't wanna say anything because they don't want you to lose your train of thought because <laughs> they think you're this magical being. Um, but if you start saying it like, oh, I'm feeling this or I'm seeing this or I'm whatever, you will notice your client will be connecting at the same time. And that is because you guys are doing this energy exchange. It's like this, like this cycle. And I feel it strongly with in-person clients, but I also have the same thing with my clients that are remote. Um, it's harder to explain, but it's like, I feel like they're sitting there with me. <laughs> um, and you just learn to trust it. The more that you trust what you are receiving, the more often it happens.
So I hope that didn't go off on a tangent too much, but I felt like that was like something really important to share. Um, so figuring out what energy belongs to you. Yeah. Your own personal energy is stuff that you think of on purpose. We can purposely think of something or feel something that we want to feel, but sometimes you will get something that is so random or you feel it off to the side. That's spirit. That is your intuition. That's your past loved one, whatever, whoever you feel that is, it's spirit. Um, and usually it's off to the side, off to the side, up here. Sometimes people feel it here in their third eye. Um, sometimes it's a chill. Sometimes it's feeling sick to your stomach or, you know, your head will start to hurt. Um, what else? Y you just, you'll know it's a different or a tone. Um, a lot of people will get the ringing in the ear. That's another sign that spirit is like saying, hello. <laughs> um, that's the, that's, that's a sign. Hi, Annabelle. <laughs> Hi, Michaela. So do you guys have any other questions? That's so cool. Thank you so much for the advice. I absolutely took it to heart. Yes. Take it. Take what resonates with you guys and then leave everything else. <laughs> you usually get a headache. Yeah, headaches are a sign that you are um, receiving. There's constant download going on, but also headaches can also be a sign that you need to un like um, disconnect. Um, I would always get big headaches after my... Um, reading sessions at the shop they were heavy headaches too and that's because i wasn't doing enough cleansing and grounding um so i would get the headaches because i would get exhausted and then you drink water and all that kind of stuff how do you read for others on days that you are feeling blah or disconnected oh this is a good one if you ever do feel disconnected that is oh hell yeah you guys will see it too i will put posts up <laughs> saying i'm not feeling good or whatever um Never be afraid to take a you day. That's number one. If you need a day off, take a day off from reading. If you are sick, if you have a cold, you're on your period, you have a headache, you, you, know, you, you ate something that didn't agree with you, whatever, um, it will usually show in your readings, especially if you are emotionally drained or you are mentally drained. Physical illnesses, um, I've done readings when I was sick with a cold or I've done readings when I injured my back, I was still doing readings. That's usually no, not a big one for me. But if I just had a fight with my husband or um, I'm on my period and I'm like all yorona, like I'm all crying all the time, um, I won't read for anyone <laughs> because my emotions will interfere with the reading. Um, I'll try not to let it interfere, but nine times out of 10, I'll, you know, if I'm like pissed off and I'm like, oh my God, how could you? And then I'll be thinking about my client. I'll be like, oh, how could you do, you know, no, <laughs> do yourself a favor and don't read when you are emotionally or mentally in a conflict. Um, it is better to take that day off. Your client will forgive you. Um, then trying to do a reading when you feel like shit and then it shows in your reading. Oh, I have two minutes remaining so i'm gonna come back on here and we'll continue this this dialogue but let me end the, the video so that i could post it as a replay i'll be right back you guys and those of you who's just sent a question um resend it because i probably won't see it so i'll be right back so we'll jump on right now <laughs> 